This, the top one was the one that was actually in the homework. The one on the bottom is a modification of it, but I'll show you the difference. So you can't use any of the shortcuts here because these are factorials. These aren't like any of the other ones that we've done. So you have to just plug it in. So I'm going to start with plugging in one, and then I'm going to go up to the top number, which is four. So I'm going to make I1, and then I'm going to make I2, and then I'm going to make I3, and then I'm going to make I4. So this would be one factorial over two to the first. This would be two factorial over two to the second. This would be three factorial over two to the third, and this would be four factorial over two to the fourth. So the factorial means multiply it times that down to one. When it's one factorial, it's done. It's just one. So this would be one over two. When it's two factorial, this means two times one. So that would be two over two times two, which is four, which is one half. Then it goes to three. Three factorial would be three times two times one. That's six over two to the third, which is eight. And that's three fourths. Does factorial just mean it's the product of that number times number down to one. So times down to previous? Yes. Or plus number previous? Times. So four factorial is four times three times two times one. So that's 12 times two, that's 24. So 24 over two to the fourth, which is 16. Four goes into both of those. Uh, eight goes into both of those. Three halves. Then you gotta add all four of those up, one half plus one half, plus three fourths, plus three halves. So if I just did the one half of the one half, that's one, plus three halves, that's five halves, or two and a half, plus three fourths, this becomes 10 fourths, plus three fourths, 13 fourths. Um, so what is the zero factorial? Zero factorial is one. And there's no computation there. You just have to memorize that. Zero factorial is one. So then the second example here, the I changes. So now we start, remember, when the I changes, we start, well, it doesn't matter when, what? We always start with the bottom number, we go up to the top number. So in this case, I only have to plug in three, and then I plug in four. So I already have these answers. This would be three factorial over two to the third, and this would be four factorial over two to the fourth, which was three fourths and three halves. So add these together, like denominator here is six fourths, six fourths plus three fourths is nine fourths. So you start at the bottom, the bottom is your lower bound, the top is your upper bound. Start at the bottom and stop at the top. Ethan, I don't think I understand your question. Ethan Mirabelle, if you hear me, I don't understand. If you want to, will there be fine? No, it's a chapter test at the end of the year. So they're calling it finals week, but it is just a chapter test and everybody takes it. And it will be 11 1 to 11 3. That's what yours will cover. It's the same as always. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Remember. All right. This was number nine. Okay. So this, to use a shortcut here, we could bump the three to the front from the, from the get-go. But then you have a product, one being squared and one being raised to the first. You can't break those up using your squareds and your raised to the first. Okay. You'd have to expand. So you'd have to do K plus two if you did it that way. K plus two squared, which would be K squared plus 4k plus 4 times k minus 5, that's k to the fifth, minus, not to the fifth, sorry, k to the third, minus 5k squared, plus 4k squared, minus 20k, plus 4k minus 20. This is if you do it the long way, right? That gets multiplied times 3, so you could either distribute that in, or you could bring the three to the front. So I could bring this three to the front. Whoa. I'm confused. Huh? I got plus seven K squared and then plus 16 and then my 10 plus 12. Yeah. Wait, what? Wait, what? Wait, what? From, from which part? So this is definitely this, right? 
So k squared times k is k to the third. k squared times negative 5, negative 5k squared. 4k times k, positive 4k squared. 4k times negative 5, negative 20k. Oh, okay, we're doing sorry. 4k, right? Oh, yeah, 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 okay. So then if I did it this way, the three could get bumped to the front and I could get the, the sigma first, right? Three would come here. And then I could break this at each term. So it would have to be the sigma of k to the third minus the sigma of k to the second minus the sigma of 16k minus the sigma of 20. Then you could use the individual shortcut. To be honest, I think it's faster to just plug in. So I'd start with one, I plug in one, three, one plus two squared, one minus five. Then I go to two, three, two plus two squared, two minus five. Then I go to three, three plus two squared, three minus five. Then I go to four, three, four plus two squared, four minus five. Then I go to five, three, five plus two squared, five minus five. And then I go to six, three, six plus two squared. 6 minus 5. What are you doing you know with the times 16 minus 20? What about it? What are you doing? Where did it go? This is if you use the, sh the, long the shortcuts. Oh! So I didn't finish yeah. that out. But then you'd have to split that up into all those shortcuts. So there'd have to be four different summations happening. I'm just kidding. Yeah. So it'd be like 3 times and it'd be the sigma of k to the third minus oh, okay. the sigma of k squared minus the sigma of 16k which the 16 would go to the front again mm -hmm. and then minus the sigma of 20. You know what I realized? yeah I and then you can use the shortcut on the third you can use the shortcut on the second you can use the shortcut on the k you can use the shortcut on the 20 but it's four different shortcuts mm -hmm. yeah do i need to finish this one out mm -hmm. or you're you're good if you go from there i would say if it is more work to do the shortcut, don't do the shortcut. See, I could have, I could have done this. I just decided you, you decided that you were done. Yeah. On the test, can you write it's easier to do the shortcut? No. 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 On the test, can I just decide? Arithmetic sequences. And arithmetic sequences are a specific type of sequences. In 10.3, we learned another different type of sequences. So the overall theme is still sequences and summation, but now we're focusing in on a special type which is called arithmetic. A sequence is arithmetic when the differences between consecutive terms are the same. So if I look from one number to the next, and then to the next, and to the next, am I adding or subtracting the same number each time? If I am, it's arithmetic. We have not done arithmetic. Yeah. Yeah, you definitely didn't do it this year. So if A1 and A2 and A3 and A4 have the same difference between them, okay, then it's called arithmetic. D is called the common difference. That's the number that you're adding each time. So if you're adding two each time, then D is two. If you're subtracting two each time, then D is negative two. The good news is that you don't have to like figure out a pattern if you know what D is and you know what the first term is, then you can create an equation to find any term in that series by using this. So a sub n, which means any term, is equal to a1, first term, plus dn, number of terms in the series, minus 1 times d, common difference. So you'll use this to actually create an equation for a series. And then if I said, give me the 20th term in it, you would just plug 20 in. So from this, you'll find a1. You'll plug D in to get the equation. And then if I ask you for like the 20th term, you'll plug 20 in for N. Okay. Yep. Uh, so where is the, where is the value for D? You, they're going to give you information. You'll see in a second. Yeah. So this is a formula that you're going to need to add to your reference sheet. Like I would start a little section on my reference sheet that said ar arithmetic. And this is the AN one or the nth term of a, using arithmetic. So number one says find a sub 13, which is the 13th term in this series, and a n for the arithmetic sequence. Oh, I get it. So I actually, you need to flip flop those two. Like that is how the directions say it, but you want to do a sub n first and then find a 13, okay? 
So we're going to find a sub n first. a n equals a 1 plus n minus 1 times d. Here's my sequence. Negative 3, 1, 5, 9. So the a1 is the first one. What's the first one? A1 is negative 3. D is the change. 4. four. Positive 4 because we're adding 4 each time. Can we see that? Yeah. What is N equal? N is the number of term in the sequence. 4. So at D is 4. Wait, A1 is always the first one? A1 is the first one. But you have to do it for all of them? No. So from here, we're going to do A sub N equals A1, which is negative 3, plus n minus 1, the n's going to stay the n, times 4. Then I distribute the 4, negative 3 plus 4n minus 4, and then I combine my like terms, 4n minus 7, and that's my a sub n equation. But if we know n is 13, You can, but it's asking for a sub n, and it's probably going to do the same thing. It's going to want a sub n, so you have to come up with the equation, and then it's going to tell you to find a specific term like a13. So in this case, now so that we found a n. A, the equation for a sub n first. Yeah. Plugging and then we're just plugging 13 in. 13 times yep. Because n is 13, right? If you're finding a sub n, a sub n is an a sub 13, then n is 13. So 4 times 13 minus 7, 4 times 13 is 52, minus 7 is 45. You would have gotten the same answer if you took 9 and subtracted 4 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 until you got to the 13th spot. But obviously, this is faster. Why can't we take both sides and take both sides? What? She understands. <laughs> well, we, so we found like the 4 and minus 7, that yeah. first step. And then the equation, like this equation, what does that one go to? Like, I don't understand. That's how we found that equation. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, but like, how do you, you have to do that for all of them? What do you mean for all of them? For all the different examples? Mm -hmm. To find a specific term, you're usually going to find a sub n first, which is that equation. Yeah. It's just how you find it is different. So the next one is a big jump. Like in, It's not the, the same kind of question. So I want to make sure you understand number one before we move to number two. Everybody's good on number one. If you have the first term and you can either give in d or can find d, then you can find your a sub n using this, and then you simplify it, and then using that, you can find any number term in the sequence. Okay, 2 says find a 18 and a sub n if a 2 is 9 and a 3 is 15. So I don't have d or a 1 this time, but what can you tell me about this information? I have a really important question. Are they okay. all going to be arithmetic? So like in, in 11, 2, they will all be arithmetic. Yeah. So like, what are we well, not necessarily. They could ask you, is this arithmetic? And it could be no. Okay. But so if it, like to do this, they have to be arithmetic. So, six is the common no. so the common difference, or, yep, is 6. And how do you know that? Because you went from 9 to 15 in one turn, right? So I know D is 6. Eight. That means A1 is? Three, and I know that because I would have gone backwards, right? I would have subtracted six from the nine, and now I have a one and I have d, yes? So a sub n equals a one, which is three, plus n minus one times six. Distribute the six, combine your terms, and I get a sub n equals six n minus three. It's just the equation to find a term. A, like a sub, sub n. The n is little. I don't even know if that's oh, the right one. Sub, sub n. Sorry. Sub n. I thought it was a sub n. I thought that's what I 
I no. <laughs> I don't even know if that's what I'm supposed to call it. That's what I call it because it's a subscript. So A sub N is that. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, now I gotta find A A eighteen is what we're looking for next. So we do A eighteen and I do six times eighteen minus three. One oh four minus three, which is one oh five. 108 minus 3, sorry. I don't know why I said 104. 108 minus 3, which is 105. Obviously faster than taking 15 and adding 6 and adding 6 and adding 6 and adding 6 15 more times. Could you do it the other way with the information that they give you? Yeah. Most likely it will ask for a sub n, though, and you'll have to give that equation as part of your answer. But you just do it by like Yeah, you could find, yeah. Can you just plug in the 18 for, like, for the end and you still get 105 from the beginning? But you don't have an equation to plug it into until you... No, like... From, this, from this step? Yeah, like... Yeah, sure. But if, you, if it asks you for a sub n, it wants it as simplified as possible. Oh, so that, oh. So this is part of my question, right? It says a, a 15 and a n. Oh. So both parts of those are answers. Does that make sense? Correct. We good? Yeah? Questions from home? I feel like every day they get quieter and quieter. I feel like the squares get darker and darker. We're losing them. Okay. It's weird to ask questions from home. I know. I know. I know it's it's not easy. After She's like, wait, hear me out. I already tried. I just I look into the A and like it's spice, like you know, with X, it's, it's there's tomatoes. So. Yeah. So you're still this, still kind of the same goal. You're looking for. You have to find D. You have to find A one. You have to find A seven, and then you eventually want to find A one hundred. So I this is divide by two. So here's the problem. You're going from A eight to A sixteen this time. How many changes is that from 8 to 16? Eight. 8 changes. So the way you find it, because you can't just do this minus this, right? Mm -hmm. Is this minus this divided by the number eight. of changes, which is 8. So we're going to do, it's almost like finding the slope. You're finding the change over the change. So you're doing negative 40 minus a negative 16, because that's the difference in the terms. And then you're going to divide that by the number of terms. So it would be 16 minus 8, which is 8. 16? Yeah, it's A16 and A8. Oh, no, I thought you said 16 and then you got the 40. 16 is negative 40 minus 8. No, it'd be negative 40 minus a negative 16. So that becomes negative 40 plus 16, which is 24. And then 24 over 8 is 3. So negative 24, sorry, yes. So we're going, we're, which makes sense, right? You're going smaller and smaller. So the D is that change, which is negative 3. Oh, D is negative. Right, because it's good. It's getting smaller, right? Negative 16 to negative 4 is getting smaller. So if that's the case, how would I work my way back to A8? That's where it gets a little bit trickier, okay? Oh, okay. How to get to A1, add yeah. Okay, so basically, in theory, eight, you got eight, divide by eight, right? So if we know the difference is three, we need to go with this eight. But we just do that for backwards. You, you would have to add three, add three, add three, add three, yes. To like from how? What if I just do three times 24 plus six, negative 16? Or is it seven? To get from A8 to A1, you have to go back how many loops? Seven, seven times. So, now one is minus so seven times three is 21. Does that make sense? Yes. But now we're no longer doing the adding. Right, because you're not counting the number of terms, you're counting the number of jumps. So terms plus one, jumps. Yes. So this is 21 total is what I'm going to add. 
to negative 16. Say again. Because it's 3 each time, right? And I go from A1 to A8, right? We have to figure out how many jumps that is. You're going to just do 8 minus 1, but to understand that we said from A8, or from A1 to A8, right, to go backwards, it'd be then A7, A6, A5, A4, A3, A2, and A1. So each time we have to add three because we're going in the other direction. If we were going forward, if we wanted to find A9, we'd be subtracting three. A10, we'd be subtracting three. But we want to go back to A1, so we're adding three. So this is three, 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 three. There's seven jumps there. So it's three times seven, which is 21. So to the negative 16, which is the A8 term, I have to add 21, and that gives me the A1 term, which is five. So I think it's a little trickier this time because of the negative. Maybe it's because normally you'd be subtracting that number, but because our D is negative, we're adding that number. Oh, but you're combining the seven terms with the eight terms. Right, we're actually finding that first term. Yeah. Yep, so that's your A1. So then AN equals A1 plus N minus one times D. So AN would be five plus N minus one times a negative three. A n is 5 minus 3 n plus 3. A n equals negative 3 n plus 8. And then the last thing we need to find here is A 100. So A 100 equals negative 3 times 100 plus 8. Negative 300 plus 8, which is negative 292. In that case, it's obviously going to be a lot faster to plug in the 100 than it would be to go forward from A16 to A100. So I'm going to review our steps because I think this is one of the trickiest kinds of questions. When you don't get given two consecutive terms, like an A2 and an A3, in order to find the, the D, we do the biggest term... So that actual value, the term minus the smaller term, which in this case was negative 40 minus a negative 16, that's our change in value. Then we put it over our n term, the, ch the difference in the n term, the 16 minus the 8. And I ended up with this, negative 24 over 8, which becomes negative 3. That's our d. And then we use the jumps from a8 to a1, which there's 7 of. We took 7 times negative 3 and said, okay, we're going to have to take that last term or the smallest term that we have, the negative 16, and add 21 to it. That gives you the A1. From there, get your A sub N equation, and then from there, plug in the value. I think this is the hardest question, if that gives you any kind of solace. I think this is one of the harder questions, just because it doesn't give you two consecutive ones, and it doesn't give you A1. This is a shortcut that's definitely a shortcut, okay? This is how you would find the sum of a part of an of a arithmetic sequence. So first of all, in order for this to work, my sequence has to be arithmetic. I have to be adding or subtracting the same term each time, same number each time. And then in order to do it, I need to know the number of terms, the first term, and the last term. So this n over 2 times a1 plus a n is really just the number of terms in that series divided by two times the first term plus the last term. Sometimes they give it to you and sometimes you gotta figure it out. So this is the sum of that set. Again, it has to be arithmetic. A lot of times books refer to this as like a partial sum or we'll just say the sum of the arithmetic sequence. No. Uh, no. No, I like when it's like, I like that. <laughs> you like when that's an option. Okay, so number four says find the sum of the first 12 terms of the sequence. So I've got negative nine, negative five, negative one, three, seven, and it's obviously going to go past that. Dot, dot, dot. In order to use that formula, I need number of terms which is our n over 2 
first plus last. So tell me what of this we already know. A1 is negative 9. There are 12 terms, so this is 12 over 2. What we don't know is our last term. Because it says the first 12 terms of the sequence. Yeah, it, and it, because there is only 5 there now. Yeah. So, to do what? Yes, you can. Yep. Plus and minus one times four. Yep. So negative nine plus, and you can plug with the 12 right in there. 12 minus one times four. Why? 11. What? Why? Why what? So you plug in the 11 there. I plugged in 12 there. So wait, yeah, why do you plug in 12 there? Because I want to find the 12th term, which is going to be the last term. No, because we didn't know D either. The problem with the last ones is that we didn't know D or the last term. We only needed two random terms. Oh, I just asked the same question earlier. You, you can do that, but you have to find AX. Yeah. Uh, Does that make sense? Yeah, okay. Wait, isn't it negative 9 plus 42? Oh, yeah, I can't read my own writing. Yep, thank you. No, that's not what's happening. <laughs> the last term is twenty. Okay, so if I didn't plug in, <laughs> if I didn't plug in the twelve, eventually you have to plug in the twelve. But you mean simplify that equation first? Yeah. Yeah, you can do that. I can still do it. Yeah. Okay. All right. So the last term, a sub twelve, would be thirty-five. Now I've got everything I need for the equation on the right. I'd get six times. 26 Which one? The, the a. a sub n is this whole thing. We just didn't simplify it because we're going to have to plug in anyways. Is it 35? Yeah. That's not going to happen. All right, number five, the sum of the first 17 terms of an arithmetic sequence is 187. If A17 is negative 13, find A1 and D. Now what? Okay, so. No, nothing. We're going to be on A7 by 13. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to have to find the sum. What do we know already? Oh, why am I paused? Hang on. Well, tell me what of this you know already. It's the sum of them equals n over 2 times first plus last. What of that do you already know from the information they give you? The last is, the last is negative 13. Negative 13. Know I know the sum is 187. 187. And the 17 is the n. So this is really all I'm looking for, right? I can make that a1, or I can make it an x, you make it whatever variable you want to. Do we know how to solve an equation with one variable? No. Yes, you do. <laughs> the answer is yes. Okay. Sometimes. How do I do it? Um, you're going to. You could distribute, but then you're going to do. Equal to it. Uh, multiply by two. I would multiply by two. Get rid of your fraction. I'm gonna start waiting for you guys to do it then. Oh, that would take forever. Mm -hmm. Now what? So if you have parentheses and something multiplying by it, when you do that, you don't multiply inside the parentheses. Remember, you keep that. What's inside the parentheses stays the same. Oh, right. And then, add 13, which is a 1 equals 35. Sorry, let's 
<laughs> okay, so A1 is 35. That's this part. Okay, so now we do. Oh, you find the common difference. Oh, well, that's yeah. not. Wait. Oh, what? Because now you have to do the, the 35 minus negative 13. Other way around, because you're going the later Just one first. Negative 13 minus 35 divided by 17. Minus, minus one. Why? Because the n, right? The, the sub number on that is what you use. So negative 48 over negative 16. The later term minus the first term over the later subscript number minus the first. And really, you could reverse them both, and it would be fine, as long as you went the same order both times. But 17 minus 1 is 5. Right, that's, yep. There you go. I was just making sure you're paying attention. Good job. <laughs> what? Hmm? I wrote negative six. Seventeen minus one. I wrote negative sixteen. It's yes. positive sixteen. Is there like a formula for that? It. I mean, there's not like uh like like it's just the la later term. Always the later term. I I was just saying it actually doesn't matter if you're consistent. Mm. Yeah. Needs <laughs> nothing. Um. So question: Why is? I don't know what you would call that. The later number minus the. Earlier number, the subscript number. The we'll call subscript. Yeah, does that make sense? Or we could say the last number, like you know, last. Well, but it might doesn't have to be the last. The but you could do last minus first and last bigger, subscript first subscript. Bigger subscript minus yeah. smaller subscript. Yeah, we're gonna okay. stop. But it's always gonna be the bigger subscript minus the smaller subscript. You literally. And the numbers that match up. But you could switch these. Oh, you why? Because you could. Oh, you could do first minus last, and then first minus last. Okay, but if, so if I did negative thirty-five plus thirteen, you have yes. Yeah. It's like slope. It's like finding the slope. It just has to, the subscript just has to match up with the terms. Then yes. That's it. Yes. So what's the three? So the I'm sorry. So three is d negative three is d. So subscript a 